Hey guys, and welcome back to the Golf for 10 show. It was a cracky round of football all up in Suncorp. Bax is the happier of the two. It was a Cowboys ambush, like he predicted, but we will get into that a little bit later. We'll talk about each team, how they went last week after we named them, and we'll say where they need to improve based on this week's games. But let's look at the ladder. You've got the Broncos, Rabbits, Panthers, and Sharks rounding out the top four with the Dolphins, Storm, Titans, and Roosters rounding out the top eight. Your bottom nine, you've got the Raiders, Manly, Warriors, Knights, Eels, Cowboys, Bulldogs, Dragons, and the West Tigers. So, unfortunately for the West Tigers, they have gone back to back, but the uh, the Roosters did stumble, which means they do stay at the bottom of the ladder because it could have looked a bit different back still with your team at the bottom if the Roosters did get the job done. But let's move into round 11. It's a tips and prediction for the Melbourne Storm taking on the Brisbane Broncos. Head to head, Storm 38 to 13 with one draw. Completion rate, 79 to 76. Points scored. Brisbane, with a shining light so far in points scored. They've got 266 to 182, and the points conceded are quite close with 174 to 170. So from an outside perspective looking in, if you took away that top head-to-head, Baxter, it looks like it's going to be a close competition, but I'm going to throw it to you. Talk me through the Melbourne Storm lineup. Yeah, you got in the fullback role, Nick Meany with Will Warbrick and Xavier Coates in the wing position. Remus Smith and Justin Ollum make the centres pairing. Cameron Muster, Jerome Hughes makes the halves. Big Nelson with Kristen Welsh in the front row position with Harry Grant in the hooker role. Trent Leora and Isaiah Katoa and Josh King round out the second row on lock. Bronson Garlic, Aaron Penney. Tom Eisenhughes, Grant Anderson round at the bench. And at the moment, Tyron Wishard will make the 18 jersey HIA position with Tarek Sins, Tepi Marora, uh, Tuli, Jaden Nikarima uh, to round out the extended bench. Yes, as we always, I will, <clears throat> as I always say, English is not my first language. So if I butcher your name, look, I'm sorry, but you try and pronounce, uh, learn my language and, um, We'll see how you go with that. So, anyways, uh, yeah, look, it was good, good game from Magic Round from Storm. It was good to see that they finally lost one over the South Sydney Rumbers. I know we, we talked about how South Sydney were their like Melbourne, Melbourne was their bogey team. Sorry, and um, it was good to see Latrell Mitt just um, firing all cylinders just before Origin time, and um, a good kick up the boot for Storm. They needed to readjust in where they need to be better going forward this season because they're currently um, six um, on both our ladders here. Um, I've got my own special ladder, not including the two points you get for a buy because that's a bloody joke. But nonetheless, it was good to see that, you know, Craig Bellin and his coaching staff and um, Billy Slade all around uh, around in the circles in the changing rooms after the game. And, uh, yeah, they were just debriefing on how they can move forward and – yeah, maybe maybe you saw the future Melbourne Storm coach amongst the ranks. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting game. I felt from a Melbourne perspective, and obviously we'll talk about South Sydney when we get to that game, but obviously from a Melbourne perspective, I just thought their last tackle options was kind of a let's put the ball up, let's put a bomb up, we'll see what happens. And when you've got the likes of Adam Johnson, um, Campbell Graham for South Sydney, Latrell Mitchell, all these players that kind of understand that it's going to be predictable. When I put a kick up, defuse the kick and get the ball back game over, I just think Storm became very predictable. Now, like you said, it's very interesting that we did have all those coaches around Bellamy, but then reports come out today that Bellamy is potentially about to re-sign for another year. So we'll have to keep <laughs> space. We'll have to see what happens. But from all accounts that's coming through today, is he will sign one more year and then he will be done. So that could be something along the lines of, Billy Slater, go do what you need to do in origin. Have your next year. Your contract's up with Queensland. My contract's up with Melbourne. Come take over. So that could be what's happening. It could be that they wanted Jason Riles, and Jason Riles is now an advanced talk of the Dragons. So it could be a number of things. But I think whoever is in charge of Melbourne come next year, whether it's Bellamy or someone else, you need to start adding more plays to this side because bombing a board of Xavier Coates every single time you get the ball, it was very easy for the South Sydney Rabbitohs to defuse that and shut it down. So very interesting. We'll see what happens. But moving into this week, you're definitely relying on Cameron Munther, Jerome Hughes, and Nick Meany to step up Hughes here because 
I look at their head to record, head to head record with Broncos, and they should win this game. They should dominate. They're going in as favourites. They're back at home. It's one of the first games that Brisbane's actually going to travel outside Queensland this year. So you might be able to pip a win here. But Baxter, let's have a look at the Brisbane side. You've got Reese Walsh, Jesse Arthurs, Katoni Staggs, Herbie Farmworth, Serlin Cobbo, Ezra Mann, Adam Reynolds, Thomas Flegler, Billy Walters, Payne Hass, Kurt Capewell, Jordan Ricky, and Patrick Carrigan rounding out the third team with Corey Pax, Corey Jensen, Cobe Hebrington, and Marty DePower rounding out the bench. At this stage, Dean Mariner is in the 18 jersey with Keenan Palacia, Jock Madden, Brandon Pekura, and Xavier Wilson. Now, Baxter, I'll throw it to you. This team blew Manly off the park. They set a standard for Magic Round where they said, you know what, we're going to come in, we're going to upset them, we're going to absolutely destroy them, we're going to make Manly look like a bunch of reserve grade footballers, which they did. But yes, Melbourne are struggling, but they're coming up against the Melbourne side that you never write off. So what do you make of this Brisbane side? What did you make of them in Magic Round? And then we'll jump into the predictions. Um, yeah, it was good to see that they got a win. Um, they set the tone <clears throat> for the for the weekend for Brisbane um, and its fans. Uh, I guess if they were to lose, I think put a bit of a downer um, around the city. Uh, you could take that any, anywhere. You know, you're up in Townsville and Cowboys lose. A bit of a down. You go to New Zealand, they lose. In Mag- like take Mag- take Magic Round over there, and that it could be a down over there. So um, it was good to see. Uh, I don't think it was sort of a um, anybody can beat Manly at the moment. Uh, with given what they're what they're going through at the moment, on and both on and off the field, um, wasn't too hard <clears throat> from a play from a from a spectator's point of view. I just. I think Tommy won't get picked in origin, but I think he's got to make that hard on us truth and say he's not right ready to play and he needs to work on himself and those hamstrings a little bit more. But um, in recent times, Brisbane have been this uh, weaker side of the two. Melbourne have been blowing them out. And, yeah, at the moment you've got a Storm sitting at $1.71, uh, Broncos two fifteen. thanks to sports, but um, not a sponsor, but... Will be a sponsor soon, and um, look, Benning Man says Storm easy. Amy Park Thursday night home team coming off a loss. Loss they don't really have back to back losses against good sides. So um, for my tipping here, I'm going a, a Storm in a not a nice tight um, one to twelve here. Yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting one. Like I think. In years past, if you said the Brisbane were going down to Melbourne, I'd jump on board 100%. And like I said, I was quite impressed with how... Sorry, i jump on Melbourne 100%. But like this Brisbane side, I'm quite impressed with how they're playing. Now, I think the main test they're going to face is, like you said, it's in Melbourne. It's at Amy Park. You have to travel. They haven't travelled many times this year. So is that going to play a part? But... I just look at this side and when I saw the odds and when you just said, and then $1.75 to two fifteen. The first thing that came to my head is that's absolutely crazy value for a Brisbane side that's running. They can score points. They can defend. They can pull a rabbit out of the hat if you want to say that. They can take an intercept and Cobo can go 100 metres. Like They have everything that says Brisbane should be there at the end of the year. They should be competing at the end of the year for that trophy. But that travel does come to my mind. So I think it's going to be a great game. I think Reese Walsh keeps up his run of form. He's trying to get that spot in origin, obviously, like you said. I think he's got it. I, I think he's got it, but you've also got to go base to what Queensland is built on. And what Queensland is built on is if you have a spot, they most likely pick you. Now, I think the same way you said about Turbo, I think Ponga will step aside and go, you know what, I'm not 100% let him have it because he does bleed Queensland through and through. So I think Ponga will rule himself out, but it's going to be interesting what happens if Kalen Ponga comes out in the next couple of weeks and has an absolute cracker, whereas Reese Walsh obviously plays Melbourne and I think they play Penrith. So he has two hard games going into that origin camp. He could kind of get flattened. He could get beat up. He could look quite average. But I think regardless, both of them are in the squad and it will be someone makes it someone might be 18th man, someone might be in the extended. <laughs> Excuse me. That goes, but I think Reese Walsh definitely is holding it. But Baxter, 
I'm going to go with the value. I'm going to go with the value here. I'm going to go Broncos. I'm going to go Broncos 1 to 12. I think they get the job done. Guys, if you have a punt on this, please gamble responsibly with Baxter. You've gone Melbourne 1 to 12 in Melbourne. I've gone for the cheeky upset with the Brisbane Broncos. I think they continue their form and they definitely need it going into origin because they will lose a few of these players. But.